Hello, hi, hey, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily. I make bookish and lifestyle videos that come out every single Friday. If you've noticed, I got a middle part going right now. I'm just trying it out. I'm just testing it. It hasn't been cut for a middle part, so it's not quite the right like stylization of it. But right now I'm kind of digging it. I wore it straight this weekend and then today when I washed it, I put the curl stuff in it to see how it looks curly. And so far, I think this is a permanent switch for right now. Anyway, what is the video about? You clicked on it, obviously, so you kind of know. This is a feminine rage reading vlog. And I had this idea of doing this swirling in my head ever since I saw the Barbie movie. I don't know, like a month or two ago. And after seeing that and having conversations with other women in my life and other men in my life, I was just filled with this sense of feminine rage. Feminine rage, not as in being a raging feminist, which I kind of have turned into recently, but having an internal rage about just being born a woman in today's society. Like being born into the pressures of being a woman, the suppression of being a woman, etc etc and so i was thinking that i would like to read some books that centers feminine rage angry females etc and i posted on reddit on the suggest me a book subreddit and asked people on there to recommend me their books about feminine rage and i did note that i'm kind of a wuss so like please not too much gore or anything and i got tons and tons and tons of responses. So I went about looking at them, putting them on hold at the library, marking them as one to read on Goodreads, and I wanted to talk about like why, to start with I wanted to talk about like why is feminine rage, angry women, women committing crimes literature so popular right now. And I've read a couple articles that speak on this. First of all, one of them really defines feminine rage and what that means in a book really well and it means that like the woman is inflicting violence either on other people as retribution or on herself for retribution. I would expand upon this and include any situation where a woman is getting what's rightfully hers by any means necessary whether that's right or wrong. So I've collected and gathered a list, I've read some articles online, and I think one of the questions is, is like, why do women love this genre? What is keeping everybody reading this? And I think that this article that I found has a really good line, even just in the heading it says, good for her, representations of feminine rage. It's exhausting to keep seeing women having to be good in the face of constant violence. What is the feminine rage genre? Feminine rage as a genre refers to a collection of works that feature female characters engaging in taboo or socially unexpected actions, most often violence. There's three different categories. The first is rage against the patriarchy or men. The second kind is general violence. And the final category is that of self-inflicted violence. Where did it come from? And this is what is what really caught my eye and really made me want to talk about this article specifically, is where did it come from? And Part of it is in the media that we all generally consume. Typical shown violence perpetuated against women, for example, Law and Order, Criminal Minds, or we watch movies like all of those old 007 movies where the woman is just perpetually a bimbo and he saves the day or whatever. All of those kind of action movies, especially like Harley Quinn and the Joker where she is just in a toxic relationship she can't get out of. Like those are the representations of women we see in media, especially on TV, especially like Game of Thrones. And you say, well, why does it have to even be in this? And then Game of Thrones people will argue with you and say that it's historically accurate. Like this is what they were doing to women in this time, even though they're just dragons. So like, why does it have to be accurate at all when dragons are involved already? So so this is like kind of a way to take control of that rage and harness it into something just for us specifically. It says, why do we connect with it? In all the types of violence that we see so often on screens, female characters are stripped of their agency. When we are so used to seeing representations of women as helpless and harmed, seeing women take control of violence can prompt the cathartic experience. 
bloody revenge plots become a fight against the oppression that has filled our screens and novels for too long, the unfamiliar subversion of the expected role of women as meek, kind, and caring is entrancing. In these texts, women are now agents of the story in control of what happens. They make the striking move of being objects rather than subjects of violence. Love that. And this isn't just something that is in literature. This other article in Fries, Fries? talks about how she, the author of this article, is seeing this even in real life. She says that she saw a woman at a local bakery wearing a t-shirt that said, rude bitches change the world. She was buying a loaf of rice sourdough and an oat milk latte, and her manner was notably pleasant. Around the same time as these signs appeared in my life, the model and writer Emily Ratajkowski declared on TikTok the beginning of her, quote, bitch era. It's easy for the pain of women to be fetishized, she argued, but what's less easy is to fetishize our anger. I liked this quote too, a piece by Katie Lowe in The Guardian. From the following year begins, there's a quiet rage simmering and unspoken among women, an anger that's been encoded in our private conversations, the, worlds we, the words we choose and looks we exchange, a language that only we know how to use. There's a sense now that female anger is something to strive towards, that its ostensible, ostensible root is in reacting to injustice makes it inherently noble. And that is why we're reading the books that we are reading this week. This was gonna be more like distance, <laughs> but then all these books kind of came together at one time. So now I'm doing it just right now. And I've already read one of them. And I actually already shot a clip of me talking about this book, but it's so outdated that I still had like a side part and everything. And so I was like, let me just redo this. So the first book I read for my Feminine Rage reading vlog books is Killers of a Certain Age by Deanna Rayborn. If you're not familiar with what this book is about, this book is about a group of women who in the 1970s were recruited into a agency of assassins basically. The company they were with originally started to hunt and kill Nazis after World War II, but when they ran out of Nazis they just turned to arms dealers, sex traffickers, drug traffickers, etc. And this group of women were recruited in their early 20s, which was in the mid-1970s. We have flashbacks of their young cases from when they were in their prime. And then we have a mystery going on in the current time where all of the women are in their 60s and they have been retired. They were rewarded in their retirement with a cruise and then they find out that somebody on their retirement cruise has been sent to kill them from the agency that they worked for for their whole lives and they have to find out why they want to kill them, how to get like out of it, etc. There's a lot of like hiding in safe houses, travel, you have flashbacks to the past and the present. You have a lot of very uniquely feminine humor in this book which I really enjoyed and of course all of the main like five or six characters are super badasses. One of them is queer. It's just a really great... So one of them is also child free and I think unmarried but I'm not 100% sure but yeah most of this book I think is told through Billy's point of view and I really enjoyed her. I listened to this on audiobook while I did diamond painting but I enjoyed it so much that I had to buy a physical copy on Pango book and one good thing about book of the month is after everybody gets a book from book of the month for $9.99 or whatever it costs you can buy it insanely cheap on Pango books after the fact. I think this book cost me like $2.99 plus shipping but I love this book. I ate it up. I gave it five stars. The other thing that's crazy about this book is in one book it hits three locations that are significant to me either in my regular life or specifically this year. The first thing the main character mentions is how the Astros lost to the Red Sox or something in the World Series or the playoffs or something and I live in Houston and I'm an Astros fan. And then she talks about how one of her safe houses is in New Orleans, Louisiana and that's where I I'm, I wouldn't say grow up, but I was born in Louisiana and we lived in New Orleans for six years. And she talks about eating at Cafe Du Monde and she talks about eating at um, Central Grocer, which is where my family used to get muffalata sandwiches when we did live there. And then they go to Italy <laughs> and they're in Tuscany, which is so crazy because I read this right after we came home from Italy. So it was just so wild that that was like where the course of events took this. It's a great mystery, it's action-packed, it's feminine, it's raging, it's everything that you need. It really takes an intensive look at the way we consider women who are older as 
unnecessary or useless or not new age enough like the way that women age especially like in their looks and their society there's a lot of talk about in this book after you turn 50 or 60 as a woman you're now invisible to society and when you're an assassin that is great it allows you to do a lot of things move swiftly without being noticed and that's what they take advantage of and it's a really excellent commentary on being a woman being older having had power you know what I mean like that kind of thing so I really enjoyed this book I gave it five stars I will give it to my mom to read but I wanted to do this little clip first and then I wanted to talk about a book that I read about 35% of and then I did DNF it so I didn't include it in this but it's called The Bandit Queen and basically this is a book about a woman in India whose husband died but everybody thinks she killed him and she has decided that she's okay with people thinking that because they don't respect her because she never had kids so it's fine that they fear her instead it kind of evens her out on the scale and now other women are coming to her asking her to help them take care of their abusive husbands i read 35 percent of this book and it kind of just felt like it was really dragging on even though the premise was really interesting there was just too much backstory of the main character she spent a lot of time in her inner monologue thinking and talking and discussing about things that had happened in the past like her childhood friends and stuff and then i felt like i had listened to it for Ever. and when I checked how long I had left I still had like eight hours in the audiobook and I blew through this audiobook so quickly like I was literally like dying to listen to it and so I feel like with audiobooks if I'm not like wanting to sit down and listen or like reaching for my airpods to walk the dog or do the dishes then I just need to move on but today I am going to start the next book for this series in Feminine Anger which is Big Swiss by Jen Begin, Begin, Big, like Wisconsin? I don't know. But this is basically, from my understanding, and I read like five pages of this last night before I went to bed, so I have like a tiny bit of context. This book is told from the point of view of our female main character who is transcribing a male therapist's conversations and therapy sessions with patients so that he can use that information transcribed to write a novel I think but she loves the drama of listening to other people's problems basically she's a really fucked up main character I was reading reviews of this last night because I was like this is so odd like the writing style of it is very like stream of conscious like it's kind of all over the place and I was reading online and the reviews say that this is sapphic so I guess eventually she ends up with one of the people that she is listening to being transcribed from the therapy appointments i don't know but i heard that this main character is unhinged and just does whatever she wants and so i'm gonna continue on with this on my kindle in ebook form from the library and then the other book that i had checked out to me that i'm gonna read for this and both big swiss and this book which is called vladimir were suggested to me on the reddit post about feminine rage and i do have an audiobook of that and all i know about this book is basically this like older woman professor goes after like one of her hot younger students i think apparently she does whatever she wants so that was recommended to me so i will be listening to that on audiobook while i walk or clean or diamond paint or whatever and i'll be reading big swiss in the meantime on my ebook and my kindle and when i get farther into either of these books i'll come back and update you and then at the end of this video remind me i have two book recommendations that i've already read previously way before this video that i want to give you if you are looking for more feminine rage books to read so i'll check in with you when i've gotten farther into big swiss or vladimir I do have a reading update for you but I only have one little blip of my battery on here so I'm gonna try and get through before my battery dies because all of my batteries for this camera are currently uncharged because that's kind of been a metaphor for my life lately but um, I am 118 pages or 37% oh it's gonna die already oh my goodness I got another one and this one oh now it has one but it did just have two so hopefully it will last long enough for me to do this but like I said 
I am really enjoying okay enjoy is a strong sense because this book is literally so unhinged and I saw all the reviews that said like the female main character is unhinged but actually every single character that you read about in this book is completely unhinged the therapist she works for is unhinged every single client he sees is unhinged her roommate is unhinged literally everybody is crazy but the book is really funny and I have a couple of highlights that I wanted to read to you really quickly before my battery dies. Specifically one that I thought was really funny. There is some trigger warnings in this book, which I think I'll go through at the end. Specifically rape, sexual assault, self-harm, physical abuse, sexual abuse, sexual assault, etc. So yeah, beware of those. I the female main character is listening to the transcripts of a therapist with a like client and she is like liking this client i guess like she likes this client's personality she obviously doesn't know who she is oh my god this one's gonna die too basically we just heard that the girl that she likes through the therapist was like really brutally attacked i skimmed her story about that i need to know the whole thing all i need to know is that she went home with this dude from a restaurant and it put her in the hospital i don't need to know the details i don't need to know anything else that's enough but i was gonna say that the writing in this book is crazy like you just literally never know what the main character is gonna say next like you don't know where her brain is gonna go you don't know what her monologue is gonna say and some of the like quotes between her and her roommate especially are really funny and i'll read you this one it's now closer to 10 and I'm in my PJs, but I finally got these batteries charged and I'm gonna pick up exactly where I left off by reading you this quote that I highlighted that I think really sums up the unique humor and writing in this book. Are you ready? <clears throat> Oops, it didn't go. Let me... They're walking down the main street of the town that they live in, which I think is like the Hudson River Valley. I'm not really 100% sure where this book takes place, but it says, the brothels were long gone, of course, but Hudson was still crawling with drunks and sluts and had been since 1785. What kind of sluts? Greta asked. All stripes, Sabine said. Sluts for nature, sluts for antiques, sluts for astrology, river sluts, real estate sluts, regular sluts. In general, I'd say there's not a lot of shame in this town. And I think that that quote alone really covers not only the humor, but the feminine rage, feminine energy feminist feeling take of this book and just other ones like this on page 42 it says yes people age horribly they suffer strokes their bodies and brains fall apart but the male ego firmly intact until the bitter end the other thing that we have is we do get the background of greta when she met and was with her previous fiance stacy who is a man that she met while she was waiting tables and they were together like nine years and he was just a genuinely good guy like i don't like hasn't been revealed yet that he did like anything implicitly bad but i wanted to shout out the uh child free characters in this stacy laughed i'm kidding no kids for me not ever i hope you're okay with that and in her own monologue she thinks music to her ears it's told in third person so that didn't really translate correctly but and the other thing too is the main character who we haven't met yet but we only know through the transcriptions of the therapy sessions that she has with the therapist that Greta is paid to translate. I hope I'm not repeating that too much because I don't remember what I said previously. She says that part of the reason she's seeing this therapist who is supposed to be a sex and relationship therapist is because she's never had the big O with a partner or by herself and she is saying she's a gynecologist in real life also and so she's like a lot of women have pain during sex and men think that they just are like lazy or like not interested or whatever but it's really because it can be painful for women because of things like endometriosis and the sex therapist doesn't even know what endometriosis is and she is kind of shocked that he doesn't know and kind of gives it to him for not knowing she's like you're a sex therapist and you don't know what endometriosis is aren't like a lot of your clients women and they don't tell you that they have painful intercourse and she says and you're probably suggesting that they're not in touch with their bodies or that they should try chanting and Greta is listening to this her telling off the therapist and Greta to herself is chanting big swiss big swiss big switch which is what she calls the female main character who we know only by her initials and then the um big the girl she's calling big switch who i think is the love interest in this book says if endometriosis affected straight men and their penises never mind you'd never hear the end of it like 
on the same topic she said well chances are the women are in, in terrible pain or just average pain most women don't say anything though because we're conditioned to suffer and to make men feel good about themselves and i just feel like the angry feminine overtones in this book are not beating you over the head in my opinion they are finding it's not like two women sitting down in a coffee shop monologuing about how much they hate their husbands it's very much like woven into the life and like dialogue between characters and also in Greta the female main character's inner thoughts and she is nuts sure but i find myself oddly relating to her sometimes like she talks about how her dog likes long and intense eye contact and i say that about delta all the time like she just wants to have eye contact with you and i don't know her and i kind of seem to agree on a lot of things except i've never stolen anything and i'm not a liar i am the opposite of a liar i am painfully truthful so that is the update I have for tonight. I'm gonna go read a little bit more before bed, but there is a lot of talk of like violence and stuff in this book. So it might be a book that I have to switch away from and read a couple pages of something else before I go to bed, which means it'll take me longer to finish this book, but I'm gonna be gone this weekend. So I'm trying my best to really wrap it up for you guys, but it is not easy, okay? Hello. It is the next day, but it's like three o'clock because, yo, this week has been busy, okay? I had so many meetings, I had so much work to do, I had to get things ready, I'm going out of town this weekend. It's just been a lot, uh, so it's already like late in the afternoon. And I have not updated you on what I read last night, and this is a little crooked, no? Literally last night, I'm on page like 173, but like literally last night after I updated you, I lay down and the first page I read, boom, she meets Big Swiss in real life. The girl that she's been listening to talk about her horrible physical assault and the fact that the guy who did eight years in prison for it is about to get out, she meets her in real life at the dog park. The same page that I had not finished reading before I updated you, but then I did and they did. So... I'm not really sure what the rest of this book is going to pertain because I'm 50% of the way through and they know each other in real life. But Big Swiss still does not know. Hey, no, come here. But Big Swiss still does not know that Greta is the transcriber for the therapist. So she knows everything really about Greta or about Big Swiss. And Greta or Big Swiss really doesn't know anything about her because she's kind of been lying to her. She didn't tell her her real name or her real age, or her real birthday, or anything like that. So they kinda, it's a very like imbalance of power between them right now. And I'm just not sure what the other 50% of this book is gonna be. I guess probably Big Swiss finding out that Greta has been lying to her this whole time. Yeah. yeah. Probably that she's gonna find out that Big Swiss has been, or Greta has been lying to her the whole time about who she is, what she does for a living, et cetera, et cetera. They did do dirty last night when I was reading. And to be honest, it's probably one of the worst sex scenes I've read in my entire life, which I know is not the point of this book. So I'm not really sure what I expected, but the, I can't even call it spice because it was not at all spicy. Where are you going? Okay, bye. Oh, she wants the best spot because nobody is out here. It was probably the worst sex scene I've ever read. Did not enjoy it. There was nothing to like about it. It was very clinical. It was very like, I don't know. It just wasn't entertaining at all. And definitely, I mean, obviously this isn't the soul of the romance book. It's about an unhinged woman and her violence, which I'm here for. But the addition of the sexual relationship between them is an odd one for the way this book has otherwise been going is all I'm trying to say. But I'm done. For the day so i'm about to dig into this and i will check in with you probably at the 75 percent mark i know i said i was gonna do the other book on audiobook i just have not had any time to listen to an audiobook but i promise that before this video is over i will have another book to talk about regardless if it's vladimir on audio or something different i will include a third book and two book recommendations in this video so i'll check in with you later on did i show this to you my kindle clear case and my little thing that's Juden Carden from the Folk of the Air series and then this pop socket says one more chapter so cute
pillow from this terrible angle and this pile of laundry that needs to be hung up behind me. But I have a reading update for you very quickly. Earlier I did some diamond painting and I listened to 23% of Vladimir. To be honest, I'm finding it a little boring. It's not really what I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was a professor student thing, but apparently he's an assistant professor too and their age gap is like 10 years. But what really is disturbing me about this book specifically is that she's married. Not that it's a big deal, they have an open relationship, but she's in her 50s so it kind of feels like a okay boomer situation where like he was messing around with like in his 40s like people in their 20s and it was always women and like seven of them like came against him and he got booted from the English department at the college that they both work at and she's like kind of fine with it she's like these women should take more of a active role in this and not see themselves as victims and I'm like this is such a bizarre take on this like I'm not really sure if anything could like make up for this woman's view of like who I'm thinking is supposed to be either young young millennials old gen z zoomers etc like we are a generation of me too of you know like snowflakes as some might call us and they she kind of hints it like oh they all have to say like you can't say anything anymore in class but it's good it's good it's good but like they're just convincing themselves of that so so far like not really super enjoying it but i am on page 202 of big swiss and again i have no idea where this book is going what i would really love to happen is that we get eventually some kind of like epilogue chapter from Big Swiss herself that gives us more insight to what was going on. What I would really, really hate to happen, and if this happened, I would give it legitimately one star, is if Greta unalives herself at any point in this book or attempts to. I would legitimately give this book one star if that's what happened. And why does every book with unhinged women revolve around self-harm and unaliving yourself? Like, why is that? Why do women who are is it is it because they're unhinged that they want to unalive themselves or is it because of the way they are treated that makes them is it coming from inside them or is it coming from the outside that's what's hard the other thing that's hard is a couple times the things that they say like i was talking about how her dog makes eye contact i feel that way about my dog and then the girl in the vladimir book is like i never really imagined myself to be that small of a person like when i look at my husband i imagine that we're both the same size but then i realized that i am actually much smaller than he is and i had that exact same experience nick and i had been together five years when we got engaged and we took some engagement photos and that is the first time i ever realized how much smaller i am than him in size and I feel like we're equals. I feel like I look him in the eye, except when we hug and he puts his chin on my head, then I don't. But for the most part, when I walk around the world, if you're like only 6'1 and not taller than that, because that's how tall Nick is, I see, I see that we see eye to eye. And maybe that is just like, what do they call it? Like little dog syndrome when the little like when a chihuahua thinks they're a German shepherd. Like, is that what I have? Is that what this woman has? I don't know. That's a lot of rambling. But it's football season now, so football is on the TV. So I'm going to read and listen to football in the background because it's the most wonderful time of the year. Hello, back with a update for you. Last night while I was diamond painting and then playing... Okay, if you haven't heard of this cute game on Switch, it's called Lemon Cake. And literally all you do is like run a bakery. And last night I played that on my Switch while I listened to the audiobook of Vladimir and I got 44% of the way through, which is like 100 pages. This book isn't really that long. And I am not really enjoying it that much. I read nearly half of this book and like, to be honest, not that much has happened. I'm sorry for the horrible state of my nails. Please don't look. But it seems like our female main character is both extremely self-absorbed and horribly insecure at the same time like every single thought in her head revolves around what other people think of her how old does she look does she look young they mistake her for a student they think she's an old lady they think they're her grandma like all this other kind of stuff like she looks young enough to be her daughter's girlfriend at the restaurant or like this and that and it's just like she must hate herself so much and it's like i kind of wish that these other two books that I'm reading were more like the first book where it was very much like 
fuck yeah, female power, kill everybody who's ever done you wrong, fuck them. But these books are very much like, I kinda hate myself, I, like, even the definition of feminine rage, the genre, you have to have violence, and in these two books, the violence really is against the character's own selves. And I prefer it when the female's m rage emanates as violence against other people. So it's not as fun. And I don't know. I don't know where this is going. I kind of read like a couple spoilers on Goodreads just because I was like, does anything happen in this book? And then I realized that this book was kind of like had a lot of hype to it when it came out and it was on like book of the month and everybody was talking about it but since then I've heard basically nothing about it and when I got it from the library it didn't even have a wait for the audiobook and the Goodreads overall average review is under a 3.5 so like objectively this is one of those books that like got a lot of hype when it came out but once people started reading it they kind of were like it just has a lot of hype but it doesn't actually follow up with anything and I am kind of feeling that way too like to be honest, I have no idea how this book is gonna end. I don't really like the female main character's attitude, like I said yesterday. Like, I don't like her attitude towards the younger generation. I don't like her attitude towards her husband. I don't like that she's not listening to her daughter who's telling her to leave her father because he's been with, you know, all these young women and stuff in a power and balance relationship. And she basically, I don't know, I can't pin down what it is about this main character. But it's almost like, it's almost like to protect herself from being a woman, she has projected herself with, like, the trappings of a man. Like, she has, like, taken on the mindset of being a man, like, being served, taking whatever she wants. Like, she wants the attention from other people. Like, she is worried about how she's aging. Like, she just wants to have, like, that armor that men naturally have because of the way they're that they're raised but she's putting it on on purpose and it's weighing her down that was a fantastic metaphor emily the english degree is hard at work today okay but that's all the update i have for you now i'm 75 percent of the way through big swiss i did read a little bit more and i have a really bad feeling about the end of this book i'm i'm at 75 percent through i'm at page like 240 and I just have a really bad feeling about the end of this book. Like, I'm pretty sure somebody is going to die. And I was not prepared to read that last night because my anxiety was too bad. And so that's going to have to wait until maybe Sunday night or Monday because I just am not in a headspace for that right now. And I have been before, but now I'm going out of town for a girls weekend, a real quick trip to French River Wide Country. And I told myself I wasn't going to get into too much like life stuff, like vlog vlog, make this more about reading, but here I am rambling once again but so yeah this probably won't get finished until i come back but for you it'll be like no time at all has passed so i gotta get going because they're gonna be here any minute to get in the car and get on the road but i'll check in with you later later not like tomorrow later but like later than that later okay do i like the middle part with the curls i just did it this morning and i feel like it's really working but i also feel like i could just curl it like with a hot curler but i'm not very good at that so okay I just popped in to update you that I DNF'd Vladimir at 61% of the way through the audiobook because this is what happened. I listened to the first 40% in one sitting while I was playing on my Switch, and then I was gone for the weekend, now I'm back, hello, and I listened to it while I was like unpacking and getting cleaned up and getting everything put away, and I felt like I had listened to like a half hour of it, and I checked, and it had only been 10 minutes. 10 minutes and it's such absolute drivel that I thought it had been a half hour so I pushed it a little further to 61% and I just absolutely cannot do it anymore the female main character in this book I don't even know if I really truly explained what this book is about and to be honest what they say the book is about doesn't even really seem to have that much to do with the plot Basically, we follow this female character. She's an English professor. Her husband is also an English professor. They work at the same college, but he has apparently been having sex with students for like 30 years. Now that we are all so woke and everything is so me too, that they all, like seven or eight of these girls like got together and like went to like, I don't know, the dean or the police or something about his transgressions against these students and are saying that it was sexual assault because he was their superior and there was a large age gap between them and he thinks he didn't do anything wrong because they all chose to have sex with him and in his mind it was their choice and his wife who's the female main character thinks apparently the same thing that 
all these girls had a choice and were not at all affected by his power over them or his age or anything like that and so it's a lot of like her not really feeling bad about what her husband did they ask her to step down from her teaching position because some of the other students don't like that he's she's still married to him she didn't leave him after all of this came to light because she knew about it the whole time and she decides not to do that and then like i would say that the other 75 percent of it is just the worst inner monologue of any character i've ever read in my life like everything is about how old she is how old she looks or how young she looks how other per people perceive her if she's still hot for her age or her thinking sexual thoughts about other people including like the guy who cuts steak at the butcher and it just doesn't make any sense and it doesn't seem to be going anywhere and i read a couple reviews online and also i thought this book was about vladimir who is like the main male character i guess but he doesn't really seem like a male main character it's almost like she's the main character and literally everybody else is a side character whereas like if you're trying to call this some semblance of a romance between a professor and a um like partner or like a tenure track professor or whatever like you would think that he would also be a co-main character and he is not at all. I don't think we have seen this man in the last 10% of this book as I was listening to it since he came over for like dinner or whatever. I don't think we've seen him at all. And I just can't do any more of it so I decided to quit. So I DNF that book but I'm gonna sit down like legitimately right now and finish Big Swiss so we can wrap this video up, okay? I just finished Big Swiss by Jen Began, I'm assuming is how you say that last name, but I really enjoyed the ending of this book. It kind of had me, like, I really, really thought that there was a chance that this book ended with Greta the main character unaliving herself, but I appreciated that. I feel like, I feel like the lesson, I'm gonna put this down while I talk, I feel like the lesson in this book is one of healing which I like because I think that the one in Killers of a Certain Age has feminine rage and they take it out on other people and everything is solved but in order to do that they have to remove obstacles from their way and there it's all outside of themselves whereas in this book I think that all of the obstacles were within Greta they were all within herself and it was it's it's the way that you take in things that have happened to you and the way that it blocks certain things for you and the sheer amount of energy and willpower it takes to be willing to remove those blockages from yourself and move into something different move into something healed move into something that's a new possibility and i really appreciate that i kind of feel that that's how this book ends and i think i'm gonna give it four stars which is pretty good i think so i had two good books for this and one dnf and if i look at i mean i guess i can't really compare vladimir to this book since i didn't finish it but i don't think that the female main character in vladimir is gonna learn a lesson i don't think she's gonna find healing i don't think she's gonna leave her husband i don't think that there is any change coming for her in that novel i could be wrong because i didn't finish it but i don't think it's worth my time to find out i would say that i enjoyed killers of a certain age and big swiss equally which is reflected i think in their four star ratings for both of these books. I think I enjoyed them equally, but I think I enjoyed them differently. They are definitely not the same kind of feminine rage books because like I said, the killers of a certain age, it's a, it's them against people, which I do like. Um I think that's the feminine rage that I like. It's like it's like all of these women you know like arm in arm together against other people who are trying to do them wrong and they come through the other side of it and it's feminist and it's witty and it's bantery and it's action-packed and then there's a book like big swiss where the 
feminine rage, the violence that has to be involved in that comes in two different ways. It comes from Greta against herself and it comes from a man against the woman who is Big Swiss who beat her within an inch of her life. So you kind of see like it's a reflection of both of the violence that women have in reality. We have violence against ourselves because of the way other people inflict themselves upon us. This is all based off of Greta's mom and then we also have women who are have violence inflicted upon them by other people, specifically usually men. And I think a lot of it you can see Greta and Big Swiss, they're pitting their traumas and their violences against each other. But at the end of the day, you realize that they're equal. Greta was wrong for snooping on her transcribed person because it was wrong of Greta to, to find her in real life even though that was an accident, but then pursue her in real life, that's fucked up, right? And then it was wrong of Big Swiss to cheat on her husband with Greta. That's wrong too. Those are not any more or less bad. They're equally bad. Just like Greta is not more traumatized than Big Swiss is. They are equally traumatized in different ways. And so I think that Big Swiss is a much deeper look at feminist rage than Killers of a Certain Age are. And I'm glad that I started this video with Killers of a Certain Age because I think it really was a gateway into the genre as a whole as more of a light-hearted, easy to read, easy to enjoy book to prepare you to be able to go deeper in a book like Big Swiss, which I did enjoy and gave four stars. So for this book, I'm going to count the 61% that I read of Vladimir just for the page count for this video. So to get them all together, I read A Killers of a Certain Age, which was 368 pages, and then I read Big Switch, which is 336 pages, and then I read 152 pages of Vladimir, even though I DNF'd it, but I'm gonna keep that because it kinda seems fair. So all together I read, I didn't count the first DNF because I never really even talked about it on here like I did with the other ones, so I just am gonna, you know, throw that to the side or whatever. So in total I read 856 pages of Angry Feminist Women for this video. And I am happy with that, even though this took me way longer than I anticipated, especially because I was like waiting for books to come through. I wanted to listen to them on audiobook. If you enjoyed this video, if you want me to read more feminist rage, nonfiction or fiction, um, please let me know in the comments down below. And I will, I have a couple more books. Oh, actually, this is not over. I had two books that I wanted to talk about with you as recommendations for reading Unhinged Angry Feminine Women. And the first book I have for that recommendation is Iron Winnow. And this book is about a young girl who, in the world that they live in, they have these men who f fight in their body. They put their bodies in these giant robots and they use them to fight the bad guys. But to give their minds an extra boost in controlling these robots, they put girls into there with them and use the girl's brain power to help power the robot along with the man. But it basically just like destroys the girls and they never live. And this girl, the main character we follow, her sister had that happen to her and she Everybody kind of just goes along with it because like the men are the protectors or whatever, but our female main character is extremely pissed off about it. So she decides that she's going to go and she's going to kill the pilot that killed her sister. And so she goes and the first thing I do is like test these women to find out how powerful their mind is, I guess, to decide who to put them with. And she has had, her test comes back as like the most powerful brain that they've ever seen on a woman. And she gets put into a fighting robot machine with a guy and she is so powerful that she kills the dude instead of him killing her. And so now they have no point except to bow down to the power of this girl. And it's a really great book. She does whatever she wants. She legitimately does not give a fuck about anything. She ends up with two dudes. Uh, so it's got polyamorous rep. It's got a little bit of male male, I think, if I remember correctly, but I don't 100% sure. And the sequel to this book comes out in like January or February next year. 
and I'm so excited because the first book ended on a cliffhanger and I can't wait to read it. Anyway, if you're looking for some feminist rage, especially fantasy feminine rage, not like literary fiction feminist rage, I highly recommend that book to you. If you're looking for some YA feminist rage, I would recommend Sadie by Courtney Summers. I read this, let's see, what year did I read this? I read this in 2019, so it's been a while. Let me read you the Goodreads thing because I don't think I'm going to be very good at describing this for you. A missing girl on a journey of revenge. A serial-like podcast following the clues she's left behind. An ending you won't be able to stop talking about. Sadie hasn't had an easy life. Growing up on her own, she's been raising her sister Maddie in an isolated small town, trying her best to provide a normal life and keep their heads above water. But when Maddie is found dead, Sadie's entire world crumbles. After what happened, after a somewhat botched... Police investigation. Sadie is determined to bring her sister's killer to justice and hits the road following a few meager clues to find him. When West McRae, a radio personality working on a segment about small forgotten towns in America, overhears Sadie's story at a local gas station, he becomes obsessed with finding the missing girl. He starts his own podcast as he tracks Sadie's journey, trying to figure out what happened, hoping to find her before it's too late. Cordy Summers has written the breakout book of her career. Sadie is a propulsive and harrowing and will keep you riveted until the last page. So basically this girl's sister is killed and she's like i'm gonna find this dude and i'm gonna fuck him up and if that's not female rage i don't know what is so i highly recommend that one it came out a while ago this book came out in 2018 and i read it in 2019 so it's a little old now and it's a little ya but like old it's not adult for sure but it's really not that young i don't know what this is considered to be on here do they consider this to be a ya novel yes they consider it on goodreads to be a ya novel so it's a little adult ya i would say more Mm, high school uh, less like middle school but still really good if you're looking for some more female rage that's all i have since i remembered to give you these book recommendations i'm so glad that i did i really hope you've enjoyed reading this video like i said i do have enough books collected like book titles collected that if you wanted to see a part two of this book of this video i could do that for you if you're interested i probably need a break for now so it won't be like right away because that's a lot of feminine rage to read um back to back to back really so I am going to head out, and I will see you again in my next video very soon.